touch gloves. Good luck. Floyd just Mayweather, said, excuse me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Justin. Yuko was a, as we said, a last minute uh, substitute. It had to go by HBO. They approved it. Also, it had to go through uh, WBC President Jose Suleiman. He saw the record. He knows the boxer. And he sanctioned, sanctioned it. So this is for the world title. Round one between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Justin Juco. Juco in the colorful trunks. Mayweather in the black trunks. Floyd, the champion, said he has grown since he won the title back in October. He's more confident now. His father is time to be a mature fighter inside the ring. And not a fighter that's going to make many mistakes. And you can bet that if Juco makes a mistake here tonight, even the slightest, Floyd Mayweather will capitalize on it immediately. Not a stranger to uh, Las Vegas, Justin Juco. He basically started his career. His first uh, about 12, 14 fights were in Las Vegas. And then all of a sudden, he took a leap. He went uh, overseas and has been fighting predominantly in Great Britain. Both these fighters now call Las Vegas home. Floyd Mayweather moved here about three years ago. As for Justin Juco, recent years as well. And you can see that Floyd has not had much time to study Juco. He was, of course, preparing for Vargas, so he's had to feel him out here in the first round here thus far. He told me earlier in the week at the press conference that nice left there, backs Juco up, that he was going to take some time here, and he, it, it really isn't that much of a factor to switch up on him because he says that many fighters cannot match his style, and basically what happens is that once they get in there, they're going to be confused. And you can see Floyd with a nice head movement here in the first round. Really setting aim at Juco's upper body with that jab. Less than halfway to go here in the first round of this WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Mayweather against Juco. And thus far, the champ is showing no respect to the challenger. With the continuing offense, Mora. Yeah, Juco, Juco's last fight was uh, in uh, February uh, 20th. So about three months ago, he comes from uh, losing a title shot for the WBA title against Antonio Hernandez in uh, Fort Worth. And uh, before that, he fought in October, won the Latin American Boxing Federation title against uh, John Bronson in Caracas, Venezuela. So uh, this guy keeps traveling, he moves around, and hopefully he'll do the same tonight in the ring. Otherwise, he's going to be in trouble. Plenty of traveling is needed inside of the squared circle when you're fighting Floyd Mayweather Jr in hopes of perhaps picking up an upset. But we talk about this young champion. He has the makings to be a champion for a very, very long time, Mario. At only 22 years of age, and with talents and skills that are unmatched in the division, it's right now Floyd Mayweather's world. We're just watching him live in it. Oh, definitely a rising star. And uh, he's one of the good guys in boxing, too. Less than five seconds ago here now in the first round of Mayweather and Juco. And you have to shot the first round for the champ. have a quick jab so the key is that once again utilize your jab use some feints on him look you can drop that right hand on top of him okay mm -hmm. don't reach for him though mm -hmm. you got a beautiful job justin let's use it okay let's not wait now there is a man who is mia tonight from juco's corner that is freddie roach the trainer from la who has trained some past champions likes of Virgil Hill to Michael Moore could not make it out this evening he missed his flight Mario and that right there has to really be a huge blow in terms of confidence for Juco a suspect uh, excuse as well as uh, Goyo Vargas as well as his chin I've heard from uh, people that know Yuko that he has a fragile chin he's likely likely to fall if he receives a, uh, a strong punch to the uh, to the button so uh, let's keep uh, let's keep on iron 
Floyd feeling himself out here in the center of the ring against Yuko and just standing right in front of his opponent. The champ clearly wants to give Las Vegas a show tonight as he comes in on Yuko. And now he's just taunting him. Taking a look across the uh, across the board with the three uh, most important organizations in boxing, other than Floyd uh, Mayweather, the other two champions are uh, Roberto Garcia, also undefeated, 32 and 0, and then we have uh, Takanori Hatakeyama, Japanese, undefeated, 22 and 0. So you got uh, you got some good competition, but I think that Floyd Mayweather is at the top. He is at the top, and he does have some fighters that he'd like to pick a bone with later on. Perhaps the Sugar Shane Mosley could be in his future. Although Sugar Shane Mosley wants to move up immediately, wants to do a couple of fights, and then move up to the welterweight division and possibly challenge Oscar De La Hoya. He wants $10 million. It seems it's excessive. And the corner of Mayweather screaming for Floyd Jr. to put the punches together. And you can see that when you have speed, you will not be hit too often inside that ring, Mario. I don't think Juco has really landed one solid blow here thus far. Pretty Boy's a guy that uh, is in constant motion. He uses the, the ring and his legs with uh, great precision. Ring master. An incredible uh, amateur uh, history. Went to the Olympics. Now he brings all that into the professional way. When you watch Floyd inside the ring, you see a fighter with laser beam precision when he throws his punches. His blows are extremely accurate. They are basically almost every time on the mark. It's not too often that you make a guy with his speed miss. As Juco is finding out a hard way tonight, as we have less than 15 seconds to go here in round number two of this WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. A nice, uh, nice little left hook he connected there at the uh, last few seconds of the fight, taking advantage of that that opening that he saw right in front of him. He's got incredibly quick uh, reflexes. His response is immediate, and as soon as the uh, opposition shows that little crack or that opening, he takes advantage of it. As we can see here, Mario, the openings present themselves, and Floyd Mayweather immediately takes advantage of it. You can see that the style of Yuko is off balance most of the time when he does throw some of his punches. He does have that awkward style, and you can see that Floyd's just making him miss with that with speed of it. He just backs up. Great waist movement. He moves, moves ahead, avoiding any contact. And I think it all depends on who you ask, on whose list uh, you're putting Floyd Mayweather, but he's obviously in the top 10, top five in most lists, I would, I would say. Maybe right behind uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Roy Jones Jr. And Floyd Mayweather starts out round three with a flurry. He immediately attacks Yuko. And look at the movement inside the ring. Floyd Mayweather Jr., the champ of the black trunks. Well, Yuko in the carnival colors. In the yellow, green, and orange trunks. <laughs> nice right. Throws Yuko off balance there. Nice counter there by Floyd Mayweather Jr. Yuko's reaction's uh, a little bit deceptive. He's been punched uh, a couple of times, and strong punches, and uh, Goes off balance, seems like he's uh, he's in trouble, but you know he just gets back up. Maybe that's just the way he likes to simulate uh, punishment, the punches that he's receiving. And Yuko gaining a little confidence now, putting himself in front of the champ and just throwing the punches. Floyd though just backs off and makes him pay for it with a quick overhand right. Another right there by Junior, follows it up with the left. 
either fighter has yet to put the other one up against the ropes and try to work them there. That right's really working for him. Sneaking it in. He brings in that left, like, uh, waist level. So Yuko doesn't really know where it's coming from. Either the jab or the right. Back in December against Angel Manfredi Jr. Earned a victory in the second round with a knockout. In February, fought Carlos Rios up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He went the distance that night. Here in a replacement, he finds himself in the third round in a fight that many expected would not last this long. Here at the Mandalay Bay Event Center. And Yuko is less than 40 seconds away from surviving round number three of this championship bout. But thus far, it's been all Floyd Mayweather Jr. as he's tossing a shutout here against the challenger. here in the corner here at ringside and he's so confident he feels so, so good about this fight so uh, positive about it that uh, he even took the time out to say hello to someone ringside. Up that time you had not been doing anything double up on the jab right hand left hook put your punches together son no sense in waiting hey this is do or die this is championship time Take a look at the highlights here from the third round. Mayweather with the right, and Juco just cannot throw any type of retaliation. There's that quick right. Even in slow motion, it's like rapid fire. You can see he's very calm and relaxed. Right there. Work the trying to break, okay. break right hand, okay? Okay. okay he's enjoying himself in the corner here, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Having a fun time at the office tonight, the champ is. We start with the fourth round here, Mario. Truly refreshing to see a, a boxer like this having fun, enjoying boxing, doing it for the love of the game, not just for the money. Of course, that's a big part of it. But you can tell that he's having a good time. Still such a young champion, Junior, 22 years of age. Amazing, 22 years old. He hasn't had uh, that many professional fights, yet the way he controls the ring and himself is amazing. Let's not forget that after this fight, we're gonna have the main event of the evening, WBC Walter White Championship of the World, Oscar De La Hoya against Obakar. But first, Floyd Mayweather tries to finish off Justin Juco here in Las Vegas, and Juco gets tagged with a nice right. Little off balance. Now he seems to be in real trouble. And Floyd is starting to smell a little blood, Mario. And you know how uh, good finishers are. They smell that blood, they're like a shark. You smell the blood, and you go for the kill. Look, Floyd backs off now, and he's parking himself in the corner, avoiding the disposal of Yuko. Now he's trying to play a little bit of possum there. And with that speed, I think what he's trying to do here is, you know, they have the Broadway show Chicago at Mandalay Bay, but tonight, Floyd Mayweather Jr. is giving the folks here a nice show. And the warning. Mitch Halpern. Bring up the gloves. <laughs> Telling Yuko to double up. But he hasn't really even been able to connect that one punch. Rare. It spares are those uh, punches that he's been able to, to connect. They've been scarce tonight. <laughs> and Floyd's punches have so much strength behind him. He's not throwing much. He's just standing still and just throwing a quick right. He's not putting his own body behind it. And he backs up Yuko with almost every single punch every time he does that. And if you're just in Yuko, you're just trying to figure out a way to get inside of that defense of his. I'm thinking perhaps 10-pound weights on the ankles. 
That might do it. Ball and chain, maybe? Perhaps 10 pound weights around the wrist. Shows you how far ahead Floyd Mayweather Jr. is against his opponents. That's half of his defense. His, uh, his movement, his legs, just moves around, moves the waist. And the opponent just does not have a solid target. Less than 10 seconds here in round number four. Floyd Mayweather Jr. just having a good old time, smiling it up for the crowd. The mark of a champion, he saw you go in trouble, yet he didn't, uh, didn't get crazy. He didn't go wild trying to knock him out. The the too much, going okay? to come. Forget about the head too much. He started going to the body. Hit him anywhere. The arms anywhere, okay? He started working the body. Talk about that exchange here, Mar, that you were just bringing it up. As you can see, here's where he gets him in trouble, and you're right. You know, he could have gone in after him, but he did it. So we watch Floyd put together a nice combination of punches. Referee Mitch Chopper. I haven't seen much of him tonight, but he does step cool, in the way it. there. Cool, that's going to set everything up. You're doing good. Right, I know. You're doing good, baby. You're doing good. Keep doing what you're doing. He's his own cheerleader. <laughs> Clapping with the gloves. He's the one keeping his father relaxed outside of the ring. That's right. His only comment was, I'm cool. And that he is. <laughs> Round number five. The WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Floyd Mayweather Jr. against Justin Yuko. <laughs> Bout scheduled for 12 rounds. Some here at ringside hoping it might end a little bit sooner in convincing fashion, of course, in favor of Floyd Mayweather Jr. because he's fighting tonight in front of his adopted hometown, Las Vegas, Nevada. And Yuko making an excellent showing tonight for a fighter who just took this fight basically on a moment's notice moment. You know, this guy doesn't fight very much. He uh, he's fought 36 times, yet he's done it over the course of almost a decade. He started fighting in 1991. That was uh, pretty much his, uh, his most active year. But uh, recently, he fights maybe three times a year, four times a year. So he's active enough to continue uh, fighting, but uh, he doesn't overdo it. And sometimes you see fighters who rebound from losses, and they're basically shot, and their whole system is just a giant malfunction. Tonight, that has not been the case for Yuko. Of course, he did lose back in February of this year, February 20th to be exact, against Antonio Hernandez, lost by TKO in the 11th round. And the only other loss was uh, right at the beginning of his career, July uh, 6th of 1991. So, took a long time for him to lose again, and that was for, for, for a title fight. One point deduction, no, there was just a warning there by Mitch Alperin. He just threatened him with a one point. And Floyd Mayweather Jr. would love to be the man who provides Yuko with his third defeat. And look at that defense there. Yuko does not even touch him. What's impressive about Floyd, he's such a short little guy. Oh, and a nice combination there, the quick left and right. And now Floyd Mayweather coming in, looking to take care of business in the fifth round. And perhaps see an end to it. But what's he doing, Mario? He backs up. So Mario, Floyd Mayweather gets his opponent in trouble, backs off here, and with 30 seconds left to go in round number five, looks like Yuko's gonna make the round. It appears so, and uh, Floyd Mayweather doesn't seem to really care much about that. Again, he's enjoying what he's doing, throwing uh, combinations. Although his corner wants punches and bunches, but he has uh, pumped up the volume just a bit in this uh, in this round. You let him get out. Let's check out uh, Floyd Mayweather. First with the left, throws a the right, and hits him right, right where it counts. Once again, the left falls with the right. So 
following through. And give a lot of credit to Yuko's chin. Watch the blows it takes here. And he does not go down. A lot of other fighters would have gone down with those type of punches. And the scout apparently was wrong. He had said that uh, he had a very weak chin. And that obviously proves that wrong. Joining us, this is for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World, Roy, excuse me, Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Justin Yukos. Just about to talk on the topic about the world's best fighters, pound for pound. Roy Jones Jr. is up there. Felix Trinidad, Oscar DeLoy, and many feel that the man who's clawing his way up there is Jr. Yeah, some actually have him in the top three. And uh, Sugar Shane Mosley, obviously. Also one of the uh, bright stars of the future, as well as Eric Morales, who's come on strong in uh, recent outings. Who says boxing's dead, right, Mario? That's right. You know, they were asking uh, Bob Arum which uh, would be his uh, favorite fights uh, to either watch or promote. He was talking about uh, Oscar versus uh, Felix Trinidad. That is pretty much a done deal. He'd like to see uh, Oscar fight against uh, David Reed, uh, Morales against the uh, Prince Nassim Hamed. That's not going to happen because the Prince wants Tapia. And uh, Michael Grant against Lennox Lewis, although the rematch Lennox Lewis versus uh, Vander Holyfield must take also place first, yes. And that's going to be here in Las Vegas, according to various reports. Slight slip there by Justin Yuko. And look at Floyd just bow down in front of him and make him miss. Surprise, I'm surprised that Floyd there on that giant miss did not blow over because of all the wind that Yuko caused. Oh, beautiful right, backs Juco up. Stops him cold, and Floyd Mayweather now is starting to go to town. Another left combination gets in there. He led with the left. Did a lot of damage with that right, though. But credit Justin Yuko's chin. It's not Teflon, but it's not glass either. Mario. No, it's not. You know, it's, it's beautiful to watch uh, Mayweather. He's, he's like seeing a pitcher in action, a pitcher who's in his zone, where he uh, focuses. That's exactly where he'll uh, end up landing. That punch, he just stood there. Excellent movement. And then uh, sort of uh, lets him off the hook. Well, he's not letting him off the hook that easily. There's a bit of a welt forming underneath the left eye of Yuko, and his corner is going to work on it here at the end of the round. Doesn't get too anxious, though, you know, when uh, when he puts his opponent in trouble. He's not going to push it. He's not going to risk. There's no, there's no need for that. He's uh, pretty much controlling the fight. You see the tip one? Watch the punch here by Floyd. That's the one that stops. Yuko backs him up for a quick second, and then check out the defensive here. Mario. Here comes the attack by Yuko. Misses with the left. Raises him with the right, and again misses with the left. That body movement with his waist. It's almost like Roger Mayweather. He used to uh, place himself almost at a at a vertical position where the where the opposition didn't didn't have that much uh, room to hit. You know, he's pretty much flat, so how can you hit a line? And of course, you bring up the Mayweather factor, and you know, he's a combination of all these great fighters in this family put into one. And they've all held titles in the past. So it makes sense that they all combine and create this supreme champion.
as Floyd Mayweather moves back and forth, and now he's giving the folks here a show. <laughs> Hot dogging it just a bit. You don't know if Floyd should be inside the boxing room when he's showing those type of moves or inside the rum jungle, the nightclub here at the Mandalay Bay Center. Look at Floyd just put those combinations together. Putting everything behind those punches. Oh, he just follows it up with the right, forces Jugo to miss, and now that energizes Mayweather up a bit. And now he's starting to show a little bit of moves there, much like a Pernell Whitaker. And you could also uh, pegged him there. It's good contact, maybe one of his best punches on that, uh, that, that counter a few seconds ago. There's a lot of excitement generated by a fighter whenever he goes below the Mason Dixon line in boxing and takes his whole body down and brings it right back up and moves from side to side. And that's exactly what Floyd Mayweather Jr. is doing here tonight. As we are past the halfway point here of round number seven, Floyd Sr. sitting right beside us, enjoying a nice night of boxing here with his son, getting a great view, watching his son develop as a, as a champ as Juco backs him up against the ropes. Now he's starting to get in with that jab a little bit. Perhaps this is Juco's best round of the fight for And uh, the fans are, are enjoying it. The arena practically uh, fills the capacity. An expectation of Oscar's uh, fight announced at around 8 o'clock. So not that much activity in the uh, hallways anymore. And Yuko now is just throwing punches and getting tagged in return to the point that he's just getting locked all over the place. That's his best punch of the fight. And Floyd just sticks his tongue out and mocks him. How disrespectful do you think that is? You like that? When you're that good, I guess you I guess you can get away with it. But unfortunately for Yuko, yeah, you're right. You know, he did take this fight. That's how Obakar feels as well. He's been completely overshadowed during the course of the week. No one really wanted to talk to him. No interviews. Yet he wants to prove something tonight. That he deserves all the attention. He says he's going to be on all the billboards. Comes September 18th, he says he'll be fighting against Felix Trinidad. Let's go to the break. corner with Juco. Take a little water, Justin. Take a look at the highlights from round number seven. Floyd Mayweather Jr. taunting Yuko for a second. Now would you go right there with the left hook? And and Mayweather, he admits it. He knows he got pegged. He acknowledges it. He sticks his tongue out. Go. It's no Gene Simmons. But then again, who is? You gotta be careful, careful sticking that tongue out. An uppercut in that situation could leave you uh, like a cat. Well, like a cat. Floyd Mayweather bounces out quickly here. The start of the eighth round. Meets Yuko halfway. Again, if you're just joining us, this is for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. 12 round bout. Performance this one sided. France was claiming victory in the World Cup against Brazil. That's the topic of tonight's card. Although Yuko is, uh, is getting more than a lot of people expect. As you said, uh, most thought this fight would be over in the second, third round. He stepped into the plate. I have to admit, I had the fight ending here very early this evening. I, I was shocked if it went past two rounds. But Justin Yuko has been a pillar in there tonight. Yeah, you can move him at times, but you're not going to knock him down. In a city that's famous for knockdowns, inside of the ring, and of course, away from it, with all the implosions. Floyd swinging, going for the head. People now attacking the body. And he is turning in a dominant performance here this evening, but 
People came to watch a knockout, and of course, when they talk about you being the best fighter in the world, pound for pound, Mario, you need to provide them with a KO. You've got to prove it. Is there much proof here tonight? He's, he's proven, obviously, that he's an excellent fighter, but, but you're right. People want to come out here and see something explosive. They want to see the knockdown. He's a knockdown artist. And they've done it in 75% uh, of his fights. The fight crowd here tonight, very, very low key. It's almost as if these two fighters were inside the main conference room in a library. Not much action from the crowd. We haven't gotten into it yet. I'm not sure why. They're still probably recovering from that Lewis Monaco battle that we saw earlier this evening. We're going through the programs, looking at Oscar's uh, photos. Less than 30 seconds now in round number eight, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Cruising like he was on automatic pilot. Now, oh, if he was on PCH up by Big Sur. Just enjoying the views and having fun. Nice left there that counters. Both guys now starting to go back and forth. A little and give and take. Finally fires up a bit here. But the bell ends. Anytime you step in with a gel, you're looking fantastic, man. Once again, we have to show you Floyd dominating the action, Mario. It's been like this the whole time. The entire route has been uh, for Floyd Mayweather, and uh, there he slips a punch again, showing his defense and the counterattack. Still seems to, uh, or appears uh, quite calm in his, in his corner. I wonder how disappointed he's going to be if he doesn't uh, manage to knock out youth. Well, he will not be disappointed or as disappointed as he was back in 1996, of course, when he was handed the bronze. I mean, that's perhaps the biggest defeat of his life, according to him, as we start the ninth round. And I say ninth with some emphasis, because many here, like I said earlier, are surprised that it's lasted this long. And I'm wondering if uh, Floyd thought this fight was going to last this long. And maybe that's why he didn't really step it up that much at the beginning. And now he realizes that this guy can actually take a punch. And he's running out of time. And Yuko just coming back with some rapid fire punches, putting together a nice grouping there. But Floyd, showing that it really didn't affect him, just stood back and just took the best of his punches. Tightened up. You can see that his muscles were contracting there to kind of like offset the amount of uh, energy that he was absorbing. Two big rights there, and Juco gets knocked back down, goes Juco for the first time in this fight. Floyd Mayweather Jr. is dancing in the corner. Juco has had a long night, he's thinking it over, and he's thought he's had enough. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Victorious tonight with a knockout over Justin Juco. Just when his corner thought he was slowing down, they were yelling, go, go. He was actually planning. He was looking for the target. Dropped it right in there, and the bomb exploded. So it's official. One minute and 20 seconds into round number nine. Floyd Mayweather Jr. retains his WBC Super Featherweight Championship. And here's how he did it, Mario. That's how he did it again. That white doubles up, staggering Yuko. And then he goes for the kill with a straight right to the chin. And Yuko had just had enough. There's someone, someone had just fallen in the ring, and it's not Yuko. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a woman, there's a lady who's. Uh, I think it's Floyd Mayweather in the ring. Floyd Mayweather's relative of sorts has just collapsed inside of the ring here. So the doctor leaves she is Yuko. Okay, she her. is talking to Flip Amansky. As we look at the highlights here of the fight, you can see that there's the big knockdown at the end that.
claimed it, but you're going to soon see a family member of Floyd Mayweather Jr. That is Floyd Mayweather's mother, who has passed out inside of the ring. It's her grandmother, I've been told. I've been told that, it's a, or, and that it is his grandmother that has just passed out inside the ring. The physicians are getting a chair here ringside. And quite a bit of commotion. I think people are, uh, I don't know if they're overreacting. Uh, we don't know what, what really happened here. She's talking. She's, she's responding to uh, what I'm asking. There's uh, quite a bit of concern. There's Jeff Mayweather. Talking though to Dr. Flip Omansky here, I think they're just relaxing her and just trying to figure it out. But it was just such an impressive performance by Floyd Mayweather Jr. It's a shame that this unfortunate incident inside the ring has had to overshadow it. But Grandma Bernice, I am told, is talking to Dr. Flip Omansky of the Nevada Athletic Commission. Another uh, taking some mice uh, into the ring. Got uh, oxygen as well, getting ready for Bernice Mayweather. And I have yet to see Floyd. He's away from his grandmother at the moment. They're now hooking up some oxygen to the elder Mayweather. Just takes a nice slow deep press. Matches something cool. What a twist of events. We should be uh, enjoying Floyd Mayweather's victory. And instead, the cameras on focus are focused on another Mayweather uh, member of the family. And now here's a, here's a very good sign here. Floyd Mayweather Jr. helping up his grandmother. How quickly the priorities change. Thinking about a career, you're thinking about a victory and moving on, and then suddenly real life comes into play. Exactly. Just excited. Teary eyed. Did you, did you notice Floyd is a little teary eyed? He's a very emotional young man. He loves his family. He cried the night he won the championship, but tonight these are not tears of joy, unfortunately, for Floyd Mayweather Jr. But that's a very positive sign there as we see his grandmother is up. Gentlemen, and appears to be breathing some oxygen. I think you are. You're warm and dry. Thank you. I'm going to help you down in just a second, okay? All right, what we'd like to do, we're going to just this have right after her Floyd stand Mayweather. up. If she feels okay, we're going to help her out of the ring. Give us a brilliant display of his power as he knocked down There's Justin a, Juco, the uh, substitute for right Goyo here. Vargas. It's a masterful yeah. performance yeah. of you, was it not? Absolutely. Stand up and let's see how you do. So there's some EMS crews here, and they're not going to bring her out. Okay. Through the ring with the help or the assistance of medical personnel, they're just going to walk her out very, very carefully. Everybody here is ringside as they walk. And just this when you thought you'd right seen it all in boxing. Something else happens. Fan man, and we had all kinds of incredible things occurring in the ring here in Las Vegas. Well, it's official. The Mandalay Bay Event Center is a boxing Ladies venue. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mitch Halpern reaches the count of 10 at one minute, 20 seconds of round number nine. The winner by knockout victory, still the undefeated WBC super featherweight champion of the world. Pretty boy for Lloyd Mayweather. Let's hear what the pretty boy has to say about this pretty performance here this evening. Here's Larry Merchant. Thank you very much, fellas. Uh, Floyd, can you tell us, uh, did you say something to your grandmother, or did she say something to you, or um, she was just overtaken with excitement? Well, first of all, I want to thank God for this, this victory, and I want to say that, um, 
my grandma just was, was a little anxious tonight um, to get in here and see me. She was happy that I got the victory. So I guess she um, she lost, lost a little oxygen, you know. So um, she, she's going to be okay. Just hyperventilated a little just bit a little there. Bit. It's kind of hot in here. It's cool. <laughs> You put a lot of pressure on yourself because you feel you're a great fighter, not getting all the recognition you deserve. Do you feel you have to close the show the way you finally were able to close it tonight? I mean, Justin Juga was a very tough opponent. He came in at the last minute, but he was already training for a, a tough fight. But um, I took my time, stayed, stayed focused, kept my composure, listened to my corner, and um, I got the job done. Let's take a look. Your right hand seemed to be the punch that you were, you felt you could land all the time tonight. Tell us about it. What were you looking for? I was just, I was just using the pull counter. And um, the shot was landing all night. I was taking my time, you know, using my shoulders, landing, you know, landing smart shots. Taking were you surprised that, that he was as tough as he was given the short notice he took this fight on? But Ju Juco was already training for a fight. He's going to fight a week after this. I knew he was going to be a tough opponent. But um, I just took my time, listened to my corner. I just want to say I'm happy to be fighting on HBO. I want to thank Top Rank and everybody for giving me this opportunity to fight one of the best out there. Thank you very much, Floyd.